Hey, hi, hello, and welcome back to the Goat Force Gaming channel where we play the roguelikes and the roguelites and hopefully add all kinds of awesome games to your backlog or your wish list or your now playing list or whatever you're doing out there. I'll tell you what, we're going to add to it. And if you like roguelikes and roguelites, I've got great news for you. That is all we play on the channel 100% of the time. And so if you like them, I'm glad you're here with us because that's all you're going to see. Hey, I am delighted to show off a game that is brand new to the channel and is going to be releasing sometime in late June 2023. This is yet another new take on the Bullet Heaven experience. Only this time, we are driving and commandeering a choo-choo train. Folks, this is a game called Choo Choo Survivor. And there is another reason why I am excited to show this off to you. This video that you are watching right now happens to be rated G. Do you know why that is? I think some of you probably know why that is. It's rated G for giveaway. How about that, huh? Giveaways are fun, and I'm so delighted that we're able to do them each week because of your support. And so all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment. That's it. And then we're going to pick one of you to earn a key for this really interesting game. And don't worry, we're going to get into it here. I'm going to try and goat explain it to you. Okay? As as we do occasionally. But we will pick one of you on June 9th to win a key for the game. And I think that you will also be able to play it early uh, because, you know, you'll have the key. Jump in there. All right, we're going to save up for another weapon here, which is going to cost us five, and we happen to have five supply crates. We're going to grab another shotgun here and put it in the circular pattern. Perfect. Doesn't that look great? Okay. Buff this a little bit. So here's what we have up top. You see that we have a completion tracker and we are trying to drive this train to the finish line. That's our goal. And we want to not die. Now I have a handy dandy, what I will call spotlight slash grabber in the mouse. As I move this around over drops, they get sucked into the train. And so we have experience pips. And we also have different types of supply crates that are going to drop for us. And all are helpful. And then in addition to that, some of the supply crates have a gold currency. And that's what's going to allow us to have the meta progression capabilities of which there are many and they're quite good. You can speed up the train. You can make the train extra durable. A lot of different things on offer. All right, I think we're ready to probably save up for the next weapon. So let's go ahead and do that. But our goal here, again, is to complete our voyage and not die, of course. So we're going to try to do that today. 
And I'll tell you what, we're gonna have a good time doing it. I figured I'd pick up just a couple upgrades there as we uh, build towards the next. Now, you might look at this and say, well, Goat, you know, it doesn't look like you're being uh, challenged all the way. Um, I have put in some time to this game because uh, I enjoy it. You know, it has a very simplistic look to it, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way. Uh, when I jumped in at first, I thought, huh, this kind of reminds me of you know, some of the old Flash games. Let's give it a go. And at first I thought, I don't know if this is gonna, you know, stick around much in terms of my interest level in it. And as I played more, it just grew on me. I also enjoy that I am in charge of the train and whether or not the train is going forward. I think it also helps me feel like a, a train conductor a little bit more because I have the space bar tied to a foot pedal that's on the floor. And so I kind of feel like I'm driving the train right into the zombies. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. I'm not going to lie. I get a kick out of it. But I do think that this game has... Uh, something going for it. I think it's unique. We have not seen a train-based bullet heaven arena survival yet. And so I applaud the dev uh, for not only taking the time to reach out to me and ask me, uh, you know, if I'd want to try the game, but also for, you know, just trying something new. Love all the innovation that we see from the indie devs of the world. There's just always something new going on. So anyway, we're going to have a nice run here today. Yeah, maybe we'll have a second run. We'll see where the conversation takes us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about coffee today. I, you know, I, I tried a new blend. And of course, it's going to make some of you go, Goat. What are you going on about with this coffee? Uh, but some of you might say, oh, wow, that, uh, that sounds super, super unique. Because it absolutely is. So we're going to get into some coffee. Uh, you know, I had, I had a really great meal uh, over the weekend. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll just have a good time doing what we do, right? We can, there is meta progression. Oh, that's one of the special, like, treasure boxes. Um, we can raise up the ramming damage of the train as well. I think I still want to put in points here before we go ahead and unlock our fifth weapon slot. And then from there, we'll grab this drone as well which will be helpful. I find that the strategy is much better to kind of take a couple weapons at a time and upgrade them so that you've got, you know, them firing on all cylinders and then grab new weapons from there. The knockback is of extreme importance in case you couldn't tell already. So, I am drinking a new coffee, so cheers to you, first of all. This is a coffee called Electric Unicorn. And, um, it absolutely lives up to its name. Now, I'm not going to say what flavor it is first. I'm, I'm just going to talk about the first experience I had smelling this coffee. I, I expected a mixture of the flavor and coffee itself. 
When I opened up this bag and took a whiff, what I experienced was very akin to what you'd have if you opened up a bag of Flintstones Fruity Pebbles and just took a gigantic whiff of it. There was not a whole lot of coffee being detected within this bag. And I thought, huh, I don't know how Electric Unicorn is going to go, you know? But I am a huge fan of fruity flavors in my coffee. So I brewed up a cup. And before doing that, I should say, I, you know, I got fresh, uh, fresh beans. And um, so I ground those up. And when I smelled the grounds, that's when I got more of a coffee aroma from it. But the fruitiness was still definitely there. So I thought, oh, okay. You know, this, uh, I think this is going to be pretty good. So I'm going to tell you something. I made this coffee and I don't, I don't know how they nailed this the way they did, but you get equal parts coffee. And I do think that this is, you know, probably between a lighter and medium roast because the coffee flavor is definitely there. It's a little bit more subtle, but somehow I feel, because everybody's taste buds are different, right? We've talked about uh, coffee flavors being more subjective at times. Um, you get equal parts coffee and fruitiness, and uh, I, I like it. I really like it. I'm drinking it black. I didn't go uh, my standard oat milk. I will try it that way eventually too, but you know, it just works for me. Now I know some of you, again, like uh, Back From The Dead commented the other day saying, I wouldn't go for that. I hear you, you know? Um, some folks say, hey, give me that smoky dirt and that's gonna be the end of it for me. I just want something dark and smoky. Give me that earth flavor. I get it, you know? I mean, I appreciate that too. I, uh, I'm open to the wider swath of options when it comes to coffee typically, you know? And lately, I've been kind of uh, on a kick Starbucks has a, I think they call it a Java Mint uh, Frappuccino, you know, their, their frozen coffee concoction. And so, you know, do we go another shotgun or do we go another minigun? I think we go minigun. And then we just continue to upgrade the guns that we have. And then eventually what we'll do is switch on over and we'll grab the drone. Uh, that's also a, a nice boon. All right, build that up a little bit. Let's keep working over here as well and we'll just kind of make our way down. So I don't get the Frappuccino. I, I'm not, not really into the Frappuccino thing. Um, but what I do have them do is to make a latte with the mint. And it just works. It's, it's super refreshing. I'm a fan. Boy, the horde is really starting to take over here and we are far away from health. Okay. This could be bad. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try to make it so where it's not bad, but it might end up poorly. We're going to find out very shortly here. Let's see. If we can manage just a little bit and keep knocking them back, that might be where we went a little bit wrong. Uh, definitely one in the inertia. And let's go with... 
inertia again. That's gonna help with the piercing capability. Boy, they are piling on. I think they're angry that we were making so much progress and doing so well. We got to that 25% mark and they said, hey, that's gonna be enough of that, goat. At least we're still getting the upgrades. I'm wondering if maybe we hold out and see if we can upgrade enough. Oh, there it is. All right, that's okay. So we're gonna show off the meta progression and then we're gonna dive right back in to another run. So stick with me here. But see, I just unlocked that fifth weapon slot. Which, you know, maybe we got that a little bit too quickly. I'm not sure. Here's the crusher damage. Let's add to that a little bit. Um, experience gang, probably a good way to go. And uh, maybe we go health regen and then another point in health. And we're going to rock right back in here and... Now, I'm happy to say that that opening run, you know, that was that was really just a warm-up. That's all. Get the brain going a little bit. Get the fingers ready to do what they must do. All right. So we're going to go for the first additional weapon here. We're going to make it a shotgun. We're going to give it a circular pattern so that we can kind of create that protection. And I think I'm gonna go knockback right off the bat, or pushback, rather, in this game. Wait for the gold to fly over. Uh, and we're just gonna focus on pushback and inertia so that we can get that penetration happening. Really important, as we saw there. Okay. Perfect. You gotta love the wailing zombies in the background noise. It's the little things that the goat comes to appreciate. All right. Uh, we're gonna go rate of fire. We've got the knockback and the inertia all the way upgraded, which is great. Uh, let's continue to put points into this. And then once we feel like, you know, we're cooking with gas as far as controlling the horde, uh, we'll look to add another weapon. We're gonna go damage and rate of fire for now. Wait for that supply crate. Perfect. Okay. So electric unicorn, folks. What do you think? You on board for some fruity cereal coffee? Or are some of you ready to cuss me out and... Uh, Say, my God, Goat, you need to maybe reflect on some of the things you're doing in your life. I get it. I get it. You know, everybody's uh, taste buds are oriented differently, and uh, I suppose that's what makes it all so interesting, right? All these different uh, food and beverage options. We're going to go with the circular... Ooh, you know what? This is set to random. Let's go circular. And we're going to go inertia and pushback again so that we can focus on that. Kind of keep these guys under control. We should see a good deal of penetration starting to happen with the shotgun blasts that we have. All right, pushback and inertia are fully upgraded. 
Start on Rate of Fire now. And we'll keep going in that direction. Now, maybe you saw, maybe you didn't. You can speed up the process of the crates coming toward the train as well. Which works out nicely, too, because, believe me, you can get this train going. If you just hammer down on the gas, you can expand on the acceleration, which is pretty neat. And my understanding is there's different trains that can be unlocked as well. I haven't tried any of the others yet. But maybe if some of you choose to pick this up when it releases, uh, maybe you'll jump in there and commandeer all kinds of trains, right? See, if you get going, they can kind of fall off the screen, and if you get too far ahead, they don't come back. I think we'll get this one's damage up to 60 as well, and then we'll look at taking on a bazooka from there. Okay. All right, let's grab that bazooka next time, and we're going to set the bazooka's trajectory up to hit whatever's closest to the train. Because what I really want to target with that are the jerks that jump up on top. Got to have something to control for them. I know, we're, we're cruising along here. Let's grab some uh, gasoline real quick. But it's just a simple little looking game, right? But, you know, I don't know, it just works. Some of these games, you look at them, and at first glance you go, I don't know. But it just, it, it does, it just works. Okay. We're going to go Bazooka Town, and we're going to say Closest. And what we'll do is we'll start working towards Area of Effect. We'll hold for that Supply Crate and the Dollars. Uh, there we go. So I think I talked about this in another video that is going to release this week. Sorry, not sorry. Sometimes that happens when I go out of order or, you know, kind of change things up. Depending on if a dev reaches out to me, sometimes I think I'm going to post a video one day and then a dev reaches out. And it's like, ah, oh, you know what? We'll show that one off first. You know, you just kind of roll with it. But I had some epic deep dish pizza over the weekend you know it was nice outside we had a real nice 70 degree day my brother-in-law came by because so we wanted to take in that movie air if you've heard of that one where nike inks the deal with uh michael jordan and they create the air jordan line uh, if you haven't seen this and you've got even a passing interest in that story, uh, they tell it incredibly well. And on top of that, most of us are Amazon Prime members. And you'll be able to watch the movie on the Prime service at no extra cost. Uh, now, if that ends up not being the case in some territories, my apologies. But I think in the States, at least, that is the case. So, we took that in, and then I had gotten some uh, frozen deep dishes from one of the 
established and popular pizza parlors out here and uh, god they do just an excellent job with their par-baked frozen options boy the horde's getting a little uh a little bit out of hand so let's pop some points into the damage of our shotguns again i, I think they're going to be really important to us and we're just going to ease into the horde. Maybe I won't slam into them this time. Even though it's quite fun slamming into them. So we picked up a sausage deep dish, a cheese deep dish, and a pepperoni deep dish. And, you know, look, I like them all. Uh, their, their sausage is just... It's an experience. But what's interesting is how the pepperoni juices meld together with their slightly sweeter sauce. And so now you've got this mix of salty and sweet coming together. Goodness, uh, you know, it's an experience. And uh, so I'm happy to say I had multiple pieces, uh, much more than than I should. But you know, when it's good, it's hard. It's it's very difficult to stop, isn't it? All right, I think we're doing okay here. We have almost fully upgraded both of our shotguns, and. I think these things are going to do a great job of keeping us alive. We're about 30% of the way there at this point. I'm, I'm feeling good about the voyage overall, I'd say. I'm still glad we had that warm-up run. Really making a difference right now. Yeah, we seem to be handling the jumpers pretty well. Okay, so those are fully upgraded at this point. I think next we're going to start working on the minigun. And I think once that is fully outfitted, we'll go ahead and start thinking about adding an additional gun. Okay. Let's get some damage going. Let's get some pushback going. I'm thankful that we boosted the experience credits that we're taking in. Because I think that makes a huge difference in terms of the speed of leveling up as well, which you can see is, is critical in times like this. Yeah, that, that cleared out a good mess of guys, that one right there. These blasts are really coming through. I wonder if we're getting near the point at which we should start thinking about the next weapon. I'm also wondering if that should be a shotgun or another bazooka, perhaps. Speaking of which, we could put some points into here. Wow. Yeah, the horde is definitely deciding to attack right now. Uh, I'm a little torn. I think we need another weapon. Okay. And we haven't made a whole lot of progress as far as the distance that we've covered, but I, I think that's coming. Especially with these special rewards that are going to pop here. Perfect. Got three. 
Next upgrade the pops. We're in the zone. Okay, so we've got 10. And what we're going to do is go with another shotgun. And I think we're going to set this one to random this time. And then we're just going to pop some points into it right off the bat. Yeah, this is uh, feeling a little bit better. Shotgun's definitely putting in the work right off the bat already. It does feel like a journey that you're on, I, I have to say. All right, there's some more pushback. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll continue with the shotgun. And here's the good news. We haven't had to put any points into a health pack yet. Every time we've upgraded, it's been to make our train better. And that's that's a win in and of itself, in my opinion. Okay, go rate of fire. Now it feels like the experience is dropping at a feverish rate, which is great. We like those feverish drops. I have spent some points buffing the value of the gold bars as well and so you know that of course helps with the meta progression process but, you know I could see this being a really nice distraction for somebody that has had a long day you know and just wants something easy to, to play I mean, you're progressing on the track and you're moving the mouse around and making some decisions along the way about your upgrades. Uh, it's it's relaxing. You don't really have to think about anything else. Put all the stressors to rest. Just focus on the trip. All right. I am feeling good about that shotgun status, and I think what we're going to start doing is holding back just one supply crate at a time and starting to build towards our next weapon being onboarded. Because I think we're definitely keeping up. We'll still put a point in each time, but only one, which will net us a crate in the bank. There we go. That'll help too. Almost there. You know, if we could find some of those special guys, we could get supply crate galore like last time. But I don't know if we're gonna run into any of them or not. Let's grab this magnet. That'll suck in some experience.
Okay, we're at five. So, uh, you know what? I just realized that I lied. We have, we're at full capacity as far as the weapons go. Well, how do you like that? Okay, so, you know what we'll do? We'll start collecting then towards the drone because that's also quite helpful. And here's our uh, guys that should drop the supply crates for us. Yep, here they come. All right, so we got three there, that's outstanding. Two there. We've got our drone. And another one, okay, we'll take it. Next level up, we've got our drone. Here's a boss guy. A little octopus looking man. Okay. We're sitting good at 14, so there's our drone. And now, we're just left upgrading what we have. And what I'll do over time is step on the gas a little bit more so that we can rip roar all the way to the finish line. We're almost at the halfway mark. About 13 minutes into our run. Let's get this thing going. Look at that. All right. Yeah, these, uh, these weapons are all coming together. Let's get this thing rip-roaring again. Uh-oh. You get going and all of a sudden the gigantic horde gets in your way and you're like, all right, well, that's okay. We're good on health, so I'm okay if that just kind of goes. Well, those, those might be worth waiting for. And then we'll step on it. You know, I think we've got some upgrading that we can do of the minigun up top as well. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Okay. After that shotgun is fully upgraded, We'll see what else we want to pop some points into. And then at some point, we'll be full up. And at that point, you're just saving towards when you need health. When and if, I guess we should say. All right, so that could use more points in it. Get the shotgun's damage up to 120. And then we'll go up top and see about buffing our minigun. As we move into the 60th percentile of our trip. Perfect. Okay. We are full on these, and now we're just going to focus here. get this thing going. Nine meters a second. Until we hit a gigantic horde, that is. But that's okay. We're, we're chewing through them at a good rate, I'd say. Now, do you get to a point where you can't screw up? I I think so, probably. I think that's probably true of, of this game. But it's about the journey overall. You know, you saw on the first run, 
I probably went a little bit too fast with adding weapons instead of maximizing the ones we did and being, you know, more able to control the horde. Oh, let's step on it if we can. Get rid of these guys. And then we're flying. There it is. Just straight on through. I mean, I'm, you know, go ahead and grab these along the way for when we slow down, but I don't think we're going to be grabbing all of them. 72% of the trip. 16 minutes in. Hey, these guys have the special crates. I, I'm okay waiting for those. Those are usually worth it. Beautiful. Okay. There we go, folks. We are maxed out, maxed out. So now it's just whenever we need these, which is likely to be almost never, I'm thinking. Because, you know, we're picking them up along the way as well. Just a quarter left in our journey. I am going to grab that health. And we need that gas as well. Now we're good. Set this baby to cruise. Uh, we'll go ahead with a health this time. 80%. It uh, feels good to slam right into them, though. I'll, I'll say that. We'll wait for these. Why not, right? Okay. Might have to inch our way for a moment. But not for too long. Yeah, I think we're, we're at that point where we can kind of just charge on through. There's 84%. There's 85%. I'm going to keep going here. There it is. We call it riding the crazy train. That's what Roger would say. No, gravy train. It's crazy train or gravy train? And then we get the nicer music coming in. It's like they're welcoming us all the way to the finish line. Isn't that nice? It's like, hey, goat, you did it. You did it. You guys did it. 95%, one more gigantic cord. We can push through, we can do it. We can do it, we're doing it. Ah, maybe an oil drum, maybe, uh, maybe an oil drum. There we go, all right, now we're pushing through. 98%, count it down, here it is. Yes. Hey, folks. This is a fun game. This is Choo Choo Survivor. And if this looks fun to you, get on out there and wishlist this. Helps these indie devs out so much. And then give this one a try when it drops later in June. And as I said, we are doing a giveaway for this game. We'll pick one of you that is subscribed and leaves a comment on June 9th to be selected to receive a key for this game. Appreciate you hanging out and supporting the channel. Makes all of this possible in terms of the giveaways and everything we're doing here and uh, you all have been 
so incredible. I, I look forward to doing this every day. So thank you for allowing me to do this and be the spokesperson for such a fantastic group of humans. Really tremendous. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Let's do this again sometime. We'll play a roguelike or a roguelite, because that's what we do every time. And, uh, you know, we'll give away a video game at least once a week. Okay, sound good? All right, take care. We'll see you again soon.